Henningberg, class defender turned club manager. The year was 2012 and Berg had the horrendous task of cleaning up the mess left behind by Keane and company. Berg's stint as manager was brief. However, was he given too big a task to do? Was the mess that bad? Do you think he could handle the club better now? Well, that's what this experiment is all about. Second chance saloon for Henningberg as we give him the Blackburn Rovers managerial job once again to see if he can do the business and get Rovers promoted at the first time of asking. So let's jump in and find out. So here we are, folks, with the latest of my 2017-2018 uh, managerial experiments uh, with Blackburn Rovers. We are going right back now to the days of Henningberg. That's right, Henningberg was in charge of Blackburn Rovers for a short spell. He had the uh, difficult, uh, I guess it was pretty difficult, basically, to, to take over the reins of what Steve Keane had left. So... He didn't really get much time. Uh, in the end, he was pretty much sacked. And then Michael Afton took over and he was sacked. And then, you know, I think GB took over from then. Um, uh, so let's just have a look at it and t tell you what I'm talking about. So here he is. Herningberg is now the manager of Blackburn Rovers. We're going to give him another shot to see just how well he could do in League One uh, with Blackburn Rovers. Just to see how well he would compare up against the other managers. And if you've not checked out the past couple of episodes of this series, you're in for some shock, as that's right. Michael Apton and GB have put up a nice, impressive points tally. And they've even eclipsed that of Tony Mowbray, the, uh, who is the benchmark for this experiment. Let's just see. Uh, anyway, we'll fast forward now to the end of the season and see how well Henningberg has done as manager of Blackburn Rovers and see where he ranks compared to the other the managers. So here we are folks at the end of the season 31st of May 2018 so let's just see how well Blackburn Rovers have done first and foremost and let's make sure that Henningberg is still in charge. As soon as I type in Blackburn it brings them up and you can already see that they are first and Henningberg is still in charge which is good to see for him. So now the interesting bit uh, in all of this just how much points did Henningberg amass as Blackburn Rovers manager. If you click on that, ooh, we get a little bit of a tease. And then we go to the table. Ooh, 87 points. Now, when you think of it, that's not that's not too bad. It's not terrible, but we'll put them in, we'll put them in my little table here. So Berg, he got play obviously played 46 games. He won 26 of them, drew nine, lost eleven, goal difference of 37, 87 points. Now in the current grand scheme of things, that puts him in third place behind Appleton and Boya. Um and he does eclipse that of Owen Coyle by just one point. Um, so let's take a look at this Rovers squad. First and foremost, the transfers. Remy Street seems to be the player that every manager seems to go for if they make a, a pickup. Um, 23 years old, Jamaican. Um, again, if you've not seen this back history, formerly of Newcastle, Port Vale on loan, Rangers on loan, picked up by Port Vale. Uh, as a, a decent return, I guess, in Port Vale. And then picked up by Rovers, but only make three appearances. Then we have Gregory, whoever Gregory is. 37-year-old Martinique uh, International. Great pick up there, uh, Henningberg. I don't know what the heck you're thinking of. He was in the Indian football. Uh, his main highlight, I guess, was Portugal Premier League. But to be honest with you, I think that's a waste of space. Waste of squad space. As for players going out, no major shockers. Stefan Moles gets some first-team action at Aldershot. Yeah, so they pretty much kept whoever they have. As for the appearances, Elliot Bennett tops the pops with 51 uh, starts. Ryers also in there with 51. Smallwood's got 45. Bradley Dack with 43. And Chapman in there with 42. As for the goals, Bradley Dack tops the goal-scoring charts with 17 goals. 14 for Armstrong. sam has got 13. Big DG, nice return for him, 11 goals. As for the assists... Harry Chapman has 14, Dak has 13, Benner has 12, Armstrong has 5, oh, and Smallwood also picks up 5. But the best player this season, Elliot Benner, 7.19, Dak second, 7.15, Derek Williams, 7.09, 7.08 for Raya and Downing. Scrapes in there with a 7.0. Where's the skipper? Where is the skipper? There he is, not far behind, 6.98. How does those players rank in the uh, performances of the season? Ch Chukas Anike uh, tops the uh, goal scoring charts with 16 goals. In fact, that's joint with Aaron Utsama, one of the players I want to see picked up by Rovers next season. Bradley Dack in third place, 15 goals. Tom Eaves joins him in third. And Jack Marriott wraps up the top five with 14 goals for the season. How about assists? 
Uh, Cameron Brannigan tops the assist tally with 17. Graham Carey's there with 12. Alex Gilby's joint third alongside Gwyn Edwards and Elliot Bennett. As for the best player of the bunch, if I can find out, if I can backtrack it up, maybe... That's a lot easier. Yes, Josh Timmon, once again, tops the tally. 7.32. Elliot Bennett, second with 7.24. Grant, uh, Anthony Grant, 7.21 in third place. Uh, there's no question about the Bradley Dak, Nick Powell situation in this division, uh, in this simulation. 7.20 for Bradley, uh, for Nick Powell. He's uh, in fourth. Cameron is Cameron Braggan is in fifth place. Gosh, I can't get my words out. 7.14. Um, but... Should, the, the conversation should be really who's better, Nick Powell or Elliot Bennett. In this scenario, Elliot Bennett tops that bad boy. Anyway, let's go around the footballing world, or especially around England, and take a look at what went on um, with the other divisions. Arsenal topped the Premier League with 94 points. Man City second, Man United in third. As for them, Dingles, uh, they are 12th. So that's uh, better than some of the other ones in my eyes. West Brom, Huddersfield and Brighton are back in the championship as for the championship itself. Let's go take a look. Ipswich, top the uh, top of the table. Bristol City second. Brentford are in third uh, at the bottom. Bolton, Burton, Barnsley. Once again, the three Bs are relegated. As for League One or the... Um, Blackburn's current division. Blackburn top the tally with Oxford in second. Uh, MK Dons uh, make themselves uh, a championship club going through the playoffs. Wigan can only manage third, but they were ousted in the playoffs. As for the bottom, Rochdale, Plymouth, Southend and Bristol Rovers are relegated to League Two. Speaking of League Two, let's take a look. Luton, Lincoln, Coventry got the automatics. Stevenage squeezed through the back door uh, with the playoffs. And Grimsby and Newport are relegated back to the Football League. So, in summary, for Henningberg, uh, third best currently out of the previous Blackburn managers. But most importantly, um, he gets he gets the job done, basically. He gets the job done. I think everyone's got the job done except for Lambert, who, what did he finish? Seventh? Absolutely shocking. So, right now, uh, he is stone cold last. Uh, by a country mile. Didn't even make the playoffs. Um, but anyway, you should check that out for yourself. Uh, in the next episode, it's the, it's the one you've probably been waiting for. It's Steve Keane. What would have happened if Blackburn Rovers were still in control or still managed by that sick creature, that vile cretin that is Steve Keane? So, um, yeah, come back and take a look at that bad boy.